Hello guys, and welcome back to Enigmatica 2. Did I miss anything? I did. I think I'm done here for now, because I've been mining a bit. And down here in the deep dark, it's so much better mining outcome. Well, I could do some more, but let's actually go back uh, to the top. It feels like I could use some faster way to travel down here. And since I have the this neat little stuff of traveling, it would actually be quite interesting to try it out a bit more and see how far we can go. Because I have been expanding. Up here you don't see much difference. And by the way, there is no speed depart this time because I've been having visits at home, so I have hardly been able to play. But I have done stuff, and parts of this you have maybe already seen in the tutorial video I posted just a few days ago, with the automatic seed and pure crystal and processor crafting stuff. I really need to move these animals out of the way because they are really annoying. Anyway, so I will not go into detail about how these work because I just showed it in a different video. But it's a compact way of making processors. So if I were to craft 10 of these, uh, let's see, I already have printed silicon from before. So the only thing we need is to grow these seeds. And then craft the stuff. So that seems to work quite okay. Uh, I don't know how much silicon I... Silicon... I don't have too many right now. I don't have much silicon. Need to set up some auto crafting for that as well. But... Uh, well, where to start? Let's just double check that this works. So they are out and we are sending the crystals here to make the circuits and then we'll get to the final part later. That seems to be taking turns. Okay, whatever, as long as it works and I'm using this printed circuit and press to get a, a press and the crystal and, and so on. Okay, so that's about that, and I've placed some auto crafting as well. We have the, and this is pure standard A2 stuff that you have seen before in my old videos. I don't feel like going into details about them, uh, but I have been trying to fill them a bit. So as you can see, we have some storage components that, not the storage cell, um, that we have here, but the component itself. And then of that it's only one crafting step, so if I were to make, let's see, one more storage. Let's see this one. I only need one housing, storage housing, and then one component. Oh. Final one, right? Storage, still not done, now it's done. So the storage component, growing some seeds. This should be ready at any second. Good. So this makes it much easier like that. And speeds up crafting, it speeds up processing. So a few more details to have to have the basic network fully functional. Because I, I mean, last time I told you that I had a basic network, 
but that network was only I think it was the ME drive and then the terminals and then not much more. Perhaps we finished this last time. Oh no right, we didn't have this last time. The thing was that we discussed this on on Discord and that's why I thought that we were, had this done already. Okay, so then I'm sorry I had more to go through than I initially thought. So let's just double check what more I've forgotten before we go into it. The Emmy network seems to be almost like it was. Down here it's only for the molecular assembler and the charged service. That one. And this is only for the pure ones and the seeds. And then this one and this assembler and the one on this side can be used by all three interfaces. So it's a compact way of doing it. If you have more than one crafting storage, you can order, you can use them both at the same time. Uh, also, if you're using a co processing unit. Otherwise, this is exactly like in the video. So over here, okay, up here, this and that and over here is only to craft the materials I need for various things. So up here, dust, surface quartz, fluix, and the nether quartz, obsidian, coal, and this will be filled with more later on, of course. For this pulverizer, the good thing with pulverizers and the ender IO machines, probably some other ones as well. Uh, is that you can set the IO, in this case, the down, bottom side, push-pull, this pulverizer, same thing. I have the right side for input and output, so basically a push-pull. So we only need to interface it from one direction, send it in, get it out. Over here, induction smelter, exactly the same thing but with some different uh, recipes, of course. Invar, Platinum, well, let me get back to that in a second, uh, to make these. And over here, Dark Steel, Energetic Alloy. Also, same thing here, we'll fill these with more recipes as we go. Um, and when it gets crowded, I need to reorganize everything, because we still have plenty of room over there. But I don't have enough material yet. So let's get back to the this no this one. One platinum and three nickel. So if we take a look at the platinum, I can actually craft one. Well, if I had some nickel ores, but I do. So nickel ores, yeah, I had eight. Now we can craft nickel ore with one nickel plus one cinnabar to craft three nickel and one platinum. And that platinum is actually 100%. So let's uh, jump there. Platinum ingot. Let's see, induction smelter with cinnabar and nickel. This is a 100% chance. Otherwise, if, you, if you're not doing that, um, let's see, let's see. You need a platinum ore, but you don't find that too often. So it can be a good idea to use the nickel for that. Um, it's actually quite hard to come by. Yep. Hard to come by. So that's one way to get it. So we get 100% and by doing that you can use it in auto crafting recipes. Remember that when you take a look at these recipes, if there's a 10% chance to get something, it's not a good idea to use this in, uh, in a recipe. So if, for example, if I were to send, uh, do we have a good example here? Yeah, like this one. If I were to send iron 
and sand, but I only get slag 25% of the time. I would need to send four of them to get one, but even then it's not guaranteed. So try to use, if it's 100%, then you can use it. Otherwise, don't do it because the order crafting uh, will just get stuck and it will wait for the, for the resource that it never got. So, well, so these are running, these are fine. I tried them and the, let's see, Dark Steel was a f last one I did. So one Dark Steel of those, I'm missing Iron. Yeah, that's how low on iron I am. And that's why I went mining. So let's not do dark iron. Let's talk about this instead. So this is... I posted it on Discord already. It's very, very simple. This is basically the input chest. So if I just drop some stuff in here. Granite. Um, more iron. Thorium, lithium, silver, and so on. I can basically dump everything in here, but I'm, I'm not. I will. I will be able to soon. <laughs> so then we have these filters for all these ones: redstone, gold, iron, silver, and so on. I need to fill up with a few more nether quartz. Everything that I want to be pulverized. So here we have just, this is just output anything. Here we get the iron. And these should be upgraded, but I don't have the resources yet. We can expand it with one more down here because these are not filtered. It's only up here. And that double chest is hopefully enough. But of course we could make it larger and have more filters. But I rather don't. If I can, if I don't really have to. And then everything else goes in the, this chest, including the silver, the iron, and all the secondary outputs that we get from here. They will end up in this chest, and then we'll do the same thing again. But here we get everything else as well, like the granite that I just put in, uh, and flint, and whatever. Here, I'll put everything and we'll do the filtering again. We whitelist all the things that we want our system to smelt or cook or whatever. Those things end up in here. Right now it's only nickel and stuff and I should actually remove the nickel one because I put the nickel in the system directly to get platinum. Uh, and that should mean I can actually use, if I order nickel, the same thing, I will get platinum as well, but I will get the three. So I will get the nickel anyway, but not automated. Everything else in will basically be automatically, automatically processed. And here we're making iron, we're making a silver and Everything ends up in this chest, everything we want to process, and everything else as well. Ends up here, and I simply have an import bus to take it into the network. But I didn't want the basalt... No, it wasn't that. The granite. Granite. I don't know how you pronounce it. I don't want that in the system because it takes up a lot of space. Right now only 1k storage. It's not really much. Uh, it's okay for all these different low, uh, low number items. But later on I want to be able to dump everything in here. And then I will not be able to use ME drives like this. So if you go up here and I'll try to dump some more. And then I can sort this later on. Things that didn't get processed, that I want to be processed, can be, I will, I mean, I go down to the network and I take a look here and I check the ores and I see that, oh, diamond ores, yeah, right, that should be perhaps automatically processed, pulverized, and then 
nothing more. So I'll do that every now and then when I think feel that I need something that's not processed the way it should be. So I also want to build some drawer uh, drawer system. I already have the controller. I think we got it in in a loot chest. So we can use that and then have lots of drawers that works well with both ingots and sand and gravel and so on. But uh, I haven't decided how to set it up yet, so let's let's do that some other time. But once I've done that, I can dump all of these in there, all the terracotta of different colors, perhaps not the potions, uh, I, I don't know, but definitely stone and granite and limestone and all these that you want to stack and you can upgrade the, the drawers. So that's probably, yeah, that's probably an episode all by itself. But these are running, everything is starting to take shape. Uh, I will have to move this around later on and when I move things around I can expand with some larger chest or I don't know if the filters of higher tiers have has more, uh, what's it called, more filter slots. Because I'm using the signal now and then it doesn't say here. Resonant is the next one, but then we need Enderium, and I don't have too much Ender Pearls. So I should really look into some mob farm of some kind to get mob drops. Hmm. Okay, anyway. That's best done off cam. Over here, thank you for comments on my episodes, sometimes I forget, even though I made an entire video series about thermal expansion and thermal dynamics and everything, I've actually forgot about this augment. Trivection chamber will give you additional food at times when cooked. So since I'm running this on, uh, on potatoes, perhaps it's a good thing to get as many baked potatoes as possible. These generators are... Uh, can we see it? Can we see how much they... 40 RF per tick, it seems. So 80 each, and that seems to be able to keep... well, parts of the system running. When I'm not processing everything, then we're fine. But right now, I guess I guess these ones will start very very soon. 11 Yep, and there it ticked. So once we, once we reached 10 <laughs> it started and now this is running. This is running. So we'll boost this up a bit. And then we'll go on and off and on and off. Because I have got lots of netherrack, this will keep the system running together with these. But soon, I mean, if we're, if we're looking at some coming projects, like the quarry, and then auto-processing for real, that will run a lot more than now, then we need real power systems. And then we're talking ore generations and stuff. Well, that's something completely different. Okay, so good. We are running. We have lots of stuff that I've gone through. Now, what about questing? So I have done a lot of quests. Let's claim chest. Sell workbench. Not something that I need right now, uh, but it's always good to have around, so... And I want the loot chest anyway. IO port, also something that I really haven't used 
perhaps more than once in a series. Emmy chest, well, that's always good to have. For example, when you're using the um, the painters and stuff, then uh, as I remember, it's good to have the Emmy drive or the Emmy chest. I made some anchors, haven't used them, but they are very good to have around. I crafted the controller because we actually need it. System grow grew quickly into more than eight devices and it's actually very soon time to expand it with the dense cables instead. So that will be fun. And then P2P tunnels, my favorite subject in the whole mod, uh, will not touch that for some time actually. The security terminal will need this for when we go wireless, so this will be very soon. Perhaps between episodes, I don't know exactly when. We need the wireless terminal and the crafting terminal. Matter condenser, well, this is used to make matter balls. So for example, in here, if I dump, you can see this one is filled, can you see it? Yeah, 256 items. If I just dump some basalt in here, yeah, now it's 307. And then we get some matter balls and then, I mean, that's not really used yet. When we go, when we're far more advanced than we need it. And then we'll set this up with some cobblestone generator or something like that. And that can be prepared in advance. I'm not really using it yet though. And then I crafted all these different things. P2P tunnels, this is just information. Crafted the different ones. If you don't remember, you put, place down a tunnel and then you right click with the, with a torch. And that gives you the light. If you right click with some uh, flux duct, then you get the FE one. If you touch with a redstone, then you, well, so that's pretty straightforward, but I think I never used anything else but normal ME terminals. Storage bus, claim it, import, export. Oops, we're full. And a few more. Look at this, level emitters. And crafting monitor, I crafted this, but it was used in, no, it wasn't. Then we can place it. It's not really needed, but it can be very, very nice to have. So clean the loot chest. Co-processing unit. I think that was the one that was used. No, nope, not even that. So many things I have ender, all right. Hardened casing. So they're not really that fun. Part chest. We'll probably not need that. More greenhouse glass, I think we got that before. More food. This is like Christmas. Dev null, and I, don't, I think I have it that already. That's too bad. I guess you can have two. Well, doesn't hurt. <laughs> already have the portal. Tesla coil. Experience pylon, interesting. I don't think I need it right now, but I think will because I talked about mod, mob farm. So hopefully soon. More food. Flamethrower, again, I have one already. More food. So these, I do not know what this is. 
If you know, then you feel free to tell me. I don't know. Upgrades that will be used later on. I have more ice of ender. And give me some more good stuff. Crafting. This was just the first order crafting thing. I don't know. That was a lame quest step. Printed silicon and then everything. So if you haven't played with AE2 before, I guess these quests are quite good. But since I know them already, they're not that interesting. I'm not just here for the loot and then unless we get some good stuff. Well, this is good. Boosters and access point. So this will be done and crafted very soon. Booking quill. Hmm. Ironwood table and another storage cell. Two of them. I like that. Thanks. So there are actually quite a lot of progress. Uh, I would like to set up some ender chest. Let's see if we can set, craft an anchor. How hard can it be? So that was quite quick. Let's make the this one travel anchor. And I think we'll place it just here in the middle of the base. Perhaps in here. Next to our bed. How about that? And this is, I guess it's home. Public visibility, I don't remember how to do it. But when we're out in the wild, and getting more ender lilies, right click to get home. I don't know the range of these. That's quite a good range. It's a very good range. Great. At least we have that up and running. I've been talking about it for quite some time. So let's make the recipe for the because I will need to make more and I noticed that the pulsating iron is made from iron and ender pearls. That should be simple enough. Pulsating, go to the iron, it's the same. Print that, put it in. And now we can order the pulsating. Okay. So things are faster now when we have the like the basic infrastructure. So going forward from here should be easy and now it looks better. See? Great. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers this episode. I haven't done much out here except for that we talked about... Well, we did talk about bees the other day on Discord. Feel free to join. So just for fun, I ran around and I just gathered some, uh, some bees. From around here, we have some more 
more heights. But I'm not really into these uh, and, uh, and I'm, not, I'm not planning to at this time. But since we discussed it and I want to try it uh, with the uh, a simple solution, yes, a servo and then uh, a filter. No, actually not even a filter. I think I'm just pushing it. Yep, yeah, just like that. So extract on the side, push it in here and then through the chest. And then from the chest, we go to the next chest because these will make sure that we never mix them unless we really want to. All right, now I don't want to mix them, but eventually with bees you want to do that. But this will make sure that all these bees will stay in here. You can see we're starting to build up drones. And if we get too many drones, they will be pushed up here instead. So these are working. We're slowly getting some combs and we'll make that into honey drops later on. Okay. Good progress, even though most of it was made off cam. Uh, it will be like that sometimes. <laughs> Alright, and I hope I see you in the next one anyway. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.